Thank you very much indeed for your time. Now, reports say that members of the British Army's special forces have been training Libyan troops. It's the latest twist in the relationship between the two countries, formerly bitter opponents. Some more, let's talk to Julie MacDonald in our London News Centre. Julie, over to you. Thanks, Darren. Now, the claims the members of Britain's Special Air Service are in Libya, training the country's own special forces. It follows the controversial release of Abdul Basit al Magrahi from a Scottish prison. He was convicted of the bombing of a Pan Am jet in 1988, killing 270 people. Britain's Prime Minister, Gordon Brown, had denied Magrahi's release was connected to a deal to improve the trading relationship between the two countries. Now the British Ministry of Defence has denied the presence of highly trained SAS troops in Libya is part of that deal. Well, James Denzelo, a security analyst from London University's King's College, told me that it's no surprise that the two countries are forging ever closer military ties. Since 2003, since Gaddafi agreed to give up his pursuit of weapons of mass destruction, he's been brought into the international community, into diplomatic folds. And that essentially has resulted in increased trade and, of course, increased cooperation on a security level as well. So it shouldn't just surprise us hugely that British forces are, are training Libyan forces on the basis of this reciprocal improvement of relationships. So are we to understand then that since 2003, perhaps the SAS has been training with Gaddafi special forces for all that time? And in fact, there probably is to link to recent events. Is that how we're to understand Well, I doubt that. I mean, re initial reports have suggested the training has occurred in the last six months, and we have to remember that Tony Blair visited Libya in 2004, where relations sort of began from there. So I doubt this has gone back that far, and of course the Brits will have to be careful here to sort of be diplomatic about these things, because there was a great deal of anger about the release of al -Magrahi in America, by the, the, the victims in the UK, and, and linking sort of the IRA conversation that hasn't even gone through yet. This will further uh, that kind of argument that what's happening here? What are what these people getting the justice they need. And could we see perhaps these forces that have been trained by RSAS being used in, in the wider region, the region around Libya, perhaps the Middle East? Is that the sort of place we could see them being deployed perhaps? Well, military forces technically can be deployed anywhere. I think, once again, that goes back to intent. And I, yeah. and I don't think Libya at the moment is any sort of military threat. That's the whole benefit of engagement. You're sort of bringing on board a country, you're opening ambassador exchanges, you're talking to them, you're exchanging military training, what have you. So this isn't something that hasn't been done before. We do it with the Egyptians we do it with the Saudis, we do it with the Jordan, so to people in Jordan. It's, it, it's a, there's a direct precedent for this, and it simply is the conversion of an enemy into an ally.